Generosity, as defined in the dictionary, is the quality of being kind, understanding, and not selfish. This definition describes everything Unitarian Universalism means to me. As Unitarian Universalists, we follow a set of principles to help guide us. All seven UU principles reflect at least one aspect found in this particular meaning of generosity. For example, principle two states, we believe that all people should be treated fairly and kindly, demonstrates the quality of being kind. Principle four, we believe we should accept one another and keep on learning together, conveys the quality of understanding. And finally, Principle six, we believe in working for a peaceful, fair, and free world reveals the quality of being not selfish. So many of us, myself included, have confused generosity with giving. However, both the dictionary definition of the word and each UU principle fail to mention anything related to giving. There is no doubt that giving is a generous act. However, I believe generosity is much greater than that, and I have learned that giving is easy compared to being kind, understanding, and not selfish. My elementary school had a random acts of kindness prize. If a teacher caught a student doing something kind, they would write the student's name down and slip it into a bright turquoise box with big colorful letters that read, Random Acts of Kindness. This box sat on the sill of the windows that looked into the cafeteria, and every time I passed that box with my class, I was fiercely inspired to do something nice for someone. <laughs> because I'm such a kind person by nature, especially during the notoriously rambunctious ages of six to 10, it would be unfair to guess exactly how many times my name was entered into the box. So I'm sure we could all agree that Around 120 times is a modest but reasonable estimate. <laughs> when my name was finally drawn, I couldn't have been happier because I won a jeans day. My school had uniforms at the time, so it was kind of a big deal to get the opportunity to show off a pair of bejeweled denim pants instead of plain khaki ones. See what a little kindness can get you? <laughs> I have learned more recently that Although holding the door open for my classmates after recess is no doubt a kind act, kindness goes much further. Kindness is driving all the way across town to pick up a friend whose car battery has died. It's volunteering to clean up the dishes so the rest of your family can relax after their hard days. It's smiling at the girl walking past you in the hallway who has tear-stained cheeks. In no way can you be generous without being kind. In addition to the quality of being kind, generosity is described as being understanding. Disappointment, fear, and confusion fill my heart when I think about our world today and how it continues to become a place of less and less understanding. A Muslim woman is harassed in front of her children on board a commercial airline flight because she is wearing a hijab. A black teenager is shot and killed on his walk home from school because the police officer who shot him was scared. A young woman sits in silence because she's been told by society that she should have known better and it is her fault that she was raped. In the year 2016, I am amazed that these stories have only become more and more prevalent. Stereotypes are taken more seriously than reality. Assumptions are favored over facts. A person's skin color, gender, sexual orientation, and religion can apparently tell us all we need to know about them. And judgments seem to be more popular than experience. I believe understanding, or a lack thereof, is the common denominator between these daily tragedies. It may be easier to cast judgments and discriminate against each other rather than reflect upon our differences in order to utilize our diversity for good, but it is one of the most generous things we can do. Not being selfish, the final component of generosity, is a hard trait to come by. 
We live in a society that puts an extreme amount of emphasis on the individual, so much that true altruism, meaning un the unselfish regard for or devotion to the well-being of others, is debated by social scientists to even exist at all. They argue that there is always some self-rewarding motivation for helping someone, and due to the complexity of human nature, no act can be completely selfless. But I would like to simplify this argument by asking, why does it matter? Why does it matter if true selflessness exists or not? Because the way I see it, whether or not the helper benefits, someone is still getting the help they need, and that is what really matters. Instead, I would like to see social scientists study the practice of altruism, or the prevalence of altruism, because then we would see how selflessness is indeed something to be learned and practiced, rather than a phenomenon to be dissected and studied. We have all, at one point, been reluctant to help someone in need, and in helping them, maybe our motivations for doing so were questionable, or we decided to not help them at all. But as with anything that requires learning and practice, over time, we can not only become more selfless with practice, but more generous as well. With that said, I wish to close by returning to my original definition and the differences between merely giving and being generous. True generosity means more acts of kindness because it depends upon a level of sensitivity and empathy which material objects cannot provide. True generosity demands a deeper level of understanding in order to dissolve injustice, prejudice, and discrimination. And true generosity encourages the lifelong practice of selflessness in order to reveal its true potential. Yes, true generosity is hard and requires more mindfulness and effort than merely giving. But in order to make this world a better place, I challenge all of you to not simply give your gifts, but be generous with them just as the three aspects of generosity the dictionary provides us. Be kind. Be understanding. Be selfless. In the end, maybe we must all give up trying to pay back the people in this world who sustain our lives. In the end, maybe it's wiser to surrender before the miraculous scope of human generosity and to just keep saying thank you, forever and sincerely, for as long as we have voices. Before we close, the youth would like to recognize everyone who helped make this service possible, including our wonderful youth advisors, staff members, and other adult mentors and volunteers from the congregation. Each Sunday, we close our time together with a song. We'd like to teach it to you now. The words are simple, and many of you will remember it from years past. The words are, good friends, good friends, let me tell you how I feel. You have given me a treasure. I love you so. We will sing it to you once, and then we will all sing it together, and then we will sing it as a three-part round, breaking the sections here, here, and here. Good friends, good friends, let me tell you. 